Kia ora team and welcome to this video. Here we are going to be looking at your job categories within Zero Practice Manager. Now when setting up our job categories, there are two things that we want to keep in mind. The first thing is we want to make sure that we can split our work in progress out between our fixed price agreements and our billable fees. And I'll explain that in a bit more detail shortly. And we also want to be able to set it up so our revenue codes, when we invoice a job, it picks up the revenue code from that job category and it sends it to that invoice within Zero. So these are the two th key things that we're trying to achieve by setting up our job categories. Now let's jump into each of those two scenarios in a bit more detail. The first one is around splitting your work in progress out. Now if we do have fixed price agreements in our practice, when we invoice those, we're going to be invoicing them out of Zero. So Zero is going to have a repeating invoice that's going out and that invoice amount is going to send back up into the job within Zero Practice Manager accumulating negative work in progress. So it's the opposite to a timesheet. So we're having a negative WIP entry for every invoice. Now if we have, let's say, $300,000 of negative WIP entries off our fixed price agreements, when we run a WIP report, it's gonna have negative 300 grand sitting in there skewing our figures for what our billable WIP is. So by being able to filter out our fixed price agreements from our billable WIP, we can then run a WIP report and look at that's exactly how much we need to invoice by job. So it's a lot easier to run our work in progress reports when we filter our WIP by our job categories. So that's one thing we are trying to achieve with our job categories. The second one is our revenue mappings. Now, there's three ways we can map our revenue from XPM down into zero. At the very base level, we can do the default revenue mappings and that's done in your zero integration settings. The next step up is our job categories, so we can identify a revenue stream with our job category. When we invoice it, it's going to look at the job category revenue code and then populate the uh, job of the invoice information with that revenue stream. At the very, very top level, we have our task and cost mappings. Now, we want to make sure that we are not using our task and cost mappings, and we want to use our job category mappings. The reason for this is if we send an interim invoice, if with an interim invoice, it doesn't know what the task and costs were, therefore it's gonna default down to that next layer. And if we don't have that set up at a job category level, it's gonna go all the way back to our default mappings. So if we're doing some advisory work and we send a deposit invoice for it, it's gonna default all the way back down to that default setting there, which could be compliance. We end up having to manipulate invoices in zero. So for that reason, we wanna make sure that we are setting up all of our revenue mappings off our job categories. It's really important that we do that. So the way we set this up, I'm actually we'll jump in and we'll check it out together. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to job settings and then you'll see we land on our job categories. Now this is how I'd recommend setting up your job categories. So we've got our billable fees and I've broken our billable fees up between our different revenue streams. So it could be advisory, it could be compliance. We've also got our fixed price agreements and internal. Internal is just for the jobs that we're not invoicing, that's all for our non-productive time, so don't worry too much about that. Fixed price agreements, we're gonna to allocate to all the jobs that we're invoicing out of zero because we can break out our revenue streams in zero. So if we have a job that has uh, both compliance and advisory uh, in the same engagement, we can break those out in our zero invoice and then the full amount of revenue will come back into that job with an XPM. So we don't need to worry about breaking out our fixed price agreements by our different revenue streams because the invoice is sent out of zero. Now, for our billable fees, we do need to break these out. So we've got our billable fees advisory and billable fees compliance. And you may also want to break this out to another layer where you go billable fees advisory one-off, billable fees advisory uh, monthly repeating. And that way you might want to have a breakdown in your profit and loss between your repeating revenue and your one-off revenue. But it's totally up to you whether you want to break this down further or not. So let's just click in and check these out. So if I click into advisory and then compliance here, You'll see if I go down to the income account, I've got it set to 202 advisory revenue for the advisory category, and then for compliance, it's going to the compliance revenue. Now the one last thing I need to show you is if we go to our tasks and costs, which are over here. So I've just jumped into my tasks, and if I click into annual accounts, what we want to do is make sure that we don't have any in income accounts set up on our tasks. The reason for this is we don't want to have these overriding what we've got set up in our job categories. We want to keep it nice and simple. Our job categories are driving our revenue mappings, and we're also using them, as we discussed, to break out our uh, different work in progress balances. So that's job categories in XPM. If you do have any questions, let us know in the chat, and I'll see you in the next video.